I need to say this. I don't yep. know what's happening in that art. Like I, I've the best. This is the best I've come up with. Okay, so there's a giant okay. man or a regular sized man, to be determined uh-huh. later, with a very very large gap between his upper lip and his nose. Right. Yep. That's and then huge. there is a very small man, or a regular sized man. If the first guy's a giant, a giant with a upside down mushroom candy cane sword, lance thing stabbing him in the eyeball that's the that's all Mm -hmm. i literally can't see anything else and i don't know what else i'm looking for all right we are back for another episode this is 10 I feel like we, Jason know. and I literally, we just did this last week. I I don't even know why I say, I try to say the number because I never look at last week in spite of making a thumbnail every week for the show. I can't yep. remember the numbers. No, I, you guys didn't do it last week either. You said 100X no. and then went into that whole <laughs> X2 conversation. So yeah, it's like you never actually know. said the episode. We haven't done that for a long time. That was like almost like when I was opening, when I yeah. was like, welcome back to episode blah, blah, blah. Like that was part of my opening like from a year and a half ago yeah and then we jason dropped it and then for some reason he said it last week and it got in my head that this week when i opened <laughs> it, i had to do it but instead of doing that, Fuck that we can open very simply with thank you we're over 1600 subscribers which means we get to give away another play set of heralds and uh that just in time <laughs> just in time for prism to be really good with dynasty i mean living legend will come people want their collector stuff i literally had somebody reach out to me because he knew i had more than i had my set that i kept because we got to keep some for ourselves so we could have some and then i got some because i'm a patron patron of push the point so i got some from them so i had some extras so i had a guy local my boy cortez was like hey hey do you know where you can you get your hands on any of those those heralds and i was like well we have the giveaways for the channel you can enter but i do have some extras so i was working on a trade with him but we have extras to give away so the way that we're going to do it is if you comment on this episode you will be entered and then on next week's podcast we will announce the winner of the 1600 sub giveaway yep. so comments it doesn't have to be about the heralds literally anything we're going to take every yeah. comment into account, every, every comment, yeah. every individual user. So multiple comments don't get you more. <clears throat> hint, hint. Yeah. I know. I, I actually love, yeah. I love when we get people that spam comments, but. Yeah, it's, well, it helps. It doesn't, it helps our analytics, but also um, I like that. I like that people comment the way that I text. Because that's oh we God. we have this in yeah. our we have this in our group chats where Dane sometimes will lose a full section of like the back and forth because our buddy Robert and I text how we talk in fragmented vomiting segments. So I just say a thought, say a thought, say a thought. It's I text so in funny because like I've noticed what it is that's so frustrating about that, and we're gonna get into a little bit. I want to, there's, there's a couple of topics, not fab related. Cause we're yeah. going to get into like spoilers and all the shit that we're excited yeah. for. There's a couple things not fab related that I really want to talk to you about that. But, okay. but this, so this topic, <laughs> you and Robert go back and forth, back and forth, like really fast. So, but yeah. I feel like our chat also punishes for like not thought through thoughts. So it's like, you are so like, you're like, you and Robert are very one end of the spectrum. Yes. Anything in the middle gets shit all over. And then there's like the well thought out put together. So it's like you either are well thought out and put together or you're spamming so fast. No one has time to give you shit. Anything in the middle gets shit all over. So, so I do not do the fast. So I do the well thought out. I'm like, okay, I'm going to say all this correctly. I'm not going to type stuff (laughs) wrong. So someone tells me, Oh, Dane had a stroke. Like I'm going to make sure like everything's good. Send it. And they're like, they're already talking about three topics from what we were discussing previously so that's See, that's my thought on that that's why now, that's why on. i We're, miss shit. yeah which is fine before we pass on to the next one i'll we'll obviously move to the next one very quickly before that i actually am now curious if people how do you text message are you a sentence or paragraph texter because i think that that's the main two distinctions 
you either text in quick bursty sentences or you text in like full paragraphs primarily or message in groups and the issue that i have with like the burst things is like i know for a fact robert was so concerned with like getting his thoughts about naruto and that video out to us that he probably wasn't even reading our messages so like, i know no, what i'm was... saying i know what i'm saying is like getting glanced over as he's like busy typing <laughs> furiously so at that point it's almost like i'd rather type the long thing wait for yeah. a lull and smack it and then then it just flips to like <laughs> where jason won't read it because it's just long and he just doesn't read those he he's just like that's too, too much, much reading yeah. yeah that's too much i don't it's want never it. gonna happen yeah but that kind of dovetails into what I wanted to talk about next, which was our chat this morning. And I just had like a really fucking weird ass morning and Blake decided to, I was on, I was just, <laughs> I was on a fucking bender and Blake shows up with a bottle of whiskey and says, go for it. So I'm having like... <laughs> You know, like I, I had like an emotional morning and music hits me sometimes, right? Like there's times where like I'll be listening to a song. This is going to sound really dumb, but Through the Fire and the Flames by Dragon Force, like that is a song that goes back to like my childhood on Guitar Hero. And then on top of that, like when I, so my first deployment was really tough and like dealt with a lot of stuff. And that was one of the songs that, like, through the fire and the flames would carry on, blah, 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 whatever. Like, that was, like, my unspoken theme song, right? So, like, I it gets me through a bunch of shit. And then I literally don't listen to it for, like, eight years. And then I watch, I think her name's Juna. Juna? I can't remember. This chick yeah. who covers the guitar, like, the guitar part of um that song. The drum. And or or what I said. Sorry, 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 sorry. Drum, 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 drum. Yep. Um, I watched so many covers of that today, but I, I I listened to it the first time and I got goosebumps the whole time. And then I listened to it again and like two minutes in, I just kind of start crying, and I'm just like, well, but but it's like happy. It's like happy emotions. And I realized that like this whole mantra I had on my first appointment, I'm like, I'm like, oh man, dude, like I just got to get through this. And I realized like now hearing it and seeing like this like joyful like chick just crust his fucking solo. I start like crying and I'm like, oh my God, I did the thing that I like had as a mantra like all those years ago. I hadn't even thought about it since. Anyways, so music hit me really hard. And then Blake's like, oh dude, like you're having like an emotional morning <laughs> here. Why don't you just watch the fucking this Foo Fighters concert, like the uh, Taylor Hawkins, the Taylor Hawkins Memorial, Hawkins oh, Memorial yeah. concert. And I was like, oh no, I fucking love the Foo Fighters. Okay. I, I, Cause I, that just happened on the 27th, right? The Los Angeles one. Yeah. It was, it was really recent. Yeah. And I hadn't watched the one from London. So I was like, oh shit, I haven't watched this yet. This is bad. So I'm just like driving in my van, just like fucking sobbing. And I'm showing up to deliveries at like hospitals, with just like red eyes, just like, oh, here. <laughs> it was a fucking rough morning and Blake just had to pile on. Sorry, really I, long winded. I might cut that. I don't know. Or did, did people give a yeah. shit about like. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm always interested in how people how people relate to that stuff. I mean, we talked about this morning how like music is very much a, yeah. an important thing to people. A lot of times, like music has a lot of influence and meaning on a lot of people. But then I also meet insane people who are on occasion are just like, yeah, I don't really listen to music. And I'm like, mm -hmm. are you a serial killer? Like, you just don't like <laughs> music? Yeah. It's it's so that's so bizarre to me. Like when people or when people just like, yeah, I'll listen to music and they couldn't tell you the name of a band. If you were like, I will give you one million dollars to name five bands right now, they couldn't name any mm -hmm. because they just turn the radio on in their car and they drive and they don't care about any of it. It's just like, oh my god, you're a that's psychopath. So crazy. You are yeah. Like I, I don't I, understand it. I associate like because I do a lot of driving for my job now too, but like I, I associate like really specific parts of like the road with parts of songs. Like if I'm listening to a song and like something hits me, like my brain apparently takes a sneep, a sneep shot, a snapshot <laughs> of where I am and what's around me. So at the next time I am in that place with what's around me, it's like, yeah. Hey, this line from that song, like I, like, I don't know, pretty strong association, yeah. but anyways, I'm going to keep that in. And just fucking comment if I, you think yeah, it's bullshit. I, you don't want me to talk about my personal life. <laughs> Which is totally cool. Yeah. 
yeah, probably we similar, don't, we don't but mind. I mean, we we it. ramble incoherently fairly regularly. It's kind of part of it's either part I, of our charm or something that like gets people to come back and just listen to our incoherent. Like maybe this you know, maybe this podcast will be coherent. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, for for over two years now and over a hundred episodes, a hundred and episodes, you can put in the number there, whoever wants to say it. You can just say it out loud in your car when you read it if you want. But uh <laughs> for that many episodes, we have found yeah. ways to ramble. I think at first we tried really hard to be like very focused, very organized. And like we're gonna discuss the meta in only topics. But I think that any good podcast like does have moments where they ramble incoherently. We and just lean really fucking hard into that. Like we, we just that's all you, we do. You tangent off and then you come back. Like you have a wonderful segue into the fact that this week has been a very big week in Fab. Today I watched uh speaking of random videos or YouTube videos, we watched the professor's video about oh, yeah. how Fab is and I love I hate clickbait unless it's so incredibly obvious clickbait from somebody who has no reason to clickbait people that it be- he's clearly making fun of clickbait, mm-hmm. right? Because you know that the professor doesn't need to clickbait people. So like anybody who got mad about him clickbaiting people is mm-hmm. just insane and wants to, you know, yeah. old man yells at clouds energy. Oh, dude, um, I guess one of my favorite things that we've started doing like <laughs> today on old yeah. man yells at clouds just a yeah. fucking guy bitching about the football token and blood bowl it's like yeah that's my rant it's like cool didn't need to post it could have just done yeah. it outside your house <laughs> it's it's the same as it's like when somebody leaves a facebook group and they feel the need to like write something i occasionally i don't do it as much as i used to i used to love tagging there's a facebook group group called this isn't an airport you don't need to announce yeah. your departure and I would always tag that onto people. And then I realized that more often than not, it just resulted in people like saying stuff and trying to trying to goad me into talking. And I'm like, I just don't want the notifications now. That's literally why I don't interact with people. That's why I'm not on just, Facebook anymore. I mean, yeah, I am. I yeah. still have it for, like for my family and photos and shit. But like, I don't oh. do anything on Facebook. Oh, I just use the groups. I go in and like look at the Blood Bowl painting groups and stuff like that. That's, that's true. Like, I do do a lot yeah. of that. I guess that's it's fair. pretty much. But I I go on and I click the groups button and I go into that. But mm-hmm. I loved his video. I loved the hilarious moment where he's like, "That flesh and blood only has two years until they've been around for half a decade," and it just leaned into the "It's mm-hmm. a joke." They're clearly here, and I loved that he emphasized all of the good things about flesh and blood and my i actually think my favorite moment in the video while there were some very cool moments right he talks about how he went to vegas and saw that it was a Mm. game that people played he did the interview with james white and how james you could see was getting very emotional and passionate about what the game means and how important pro tour one was to him i loved the fact that the professor talked about his experience going into his LGS to get blitz mm-hmm. decks. And the guy behind the counter was just sell. He was passionate. He mm-hmm. was in, he was selling. And then he finds out that the people are playing. And I was like, that to me defines flesh and blood. It's a community of people who are just super passionate about this game. Fuck we sales, love to play man. it. Everybody is trying to get everybody to try it. It's like, even I, I love that it on Twitter now. It, there's kind of the meme that people are just everybody has it saved in their phone, and I see it all the time on Magic posts because I I don't follow anybody who's Magic, but you know Twitter will give you like the recommend. Yeah. It's like so and so follows this person, so it's like Fino and Tarek and a bunch of these Magic people have been posting the guy at the door holding the Flesh and Blood box. It's like, excuse me, do you have a moment to talk about Flesh and Blood? And people are complaining about magic this and magic that. It's like, excuse me, sir, do you have a moment to talk about flesh and blood? Dude, it's just magic, it's that, man. That nature, yeah. There's that whole oh, thing God. you can get into, too, the 30th anniversary. We yeah. don't need to dig what into a, all that, but it's just like... What a contrast. It is. It's quite the contrast. But I also, I, I made it through Rudy's video because I wanted to see. I was like, what the fuck's he saying about it? Not that I really had to guess. You know, like you, you basically know. But... uh I mean, he he did nail it in his video. He was like, if you were still one of those people hanging on to, you know, 
community wizards wizards in the community and stuff it's like you're a fucking idiot because <laughs> one you shouldn't have ever really thought that they're a major corporation but two yeah if you still think that or are holding on to that like what are they going to do to help support the community so they don't give a fuck about the community like at all yeah. like why why uh, does it affect their bottom line drastically no the nine a thousand dollars for four fucking packs of goddamn yeah. proxies, that's so crazy. And they're not tournament legal. Yeah, no, they're back. They're literally yeah. pro- like they're glorified proxies. Yeah, like, they're Jesus they're Christ. kitchen table proxies is the crazy part. Like, yeah. So I, watch watch the professor's yeah. video. I wouldn't even like necessarily recommend Rudy's video unless you, if you're a Rudy yeah. fan, you've already seen it. If you're not a Rudy fan, don't look at You'll it. Don't watch see it. it. Yeah. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't cover yeah. anything drastic. But yeah. um Yeah man, it's just uh he could be entertaining sometimes. I like to watch and see see what he goes goes off about. But uh dude, he is a fucking businessman. Like he's like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna make yeah. my fucking even the whole time I'm like, dude, you're just fucking peddling. Do you peddling yeah. motherfucker? And which is fine. Yeah. That's his that's his total right to do that. So whatever. Yeah. I, I think that's I I don't remember who I was I was actually talking, I think I was messaging back and forth. Dave and I were talking today and it came up how oftentimes like that's one of the things that's weird in society right now is you can't have an opinion where you're like, well, I don't like that without somebody saying, well, hold, let me explain to you why you should. Like, oh, right. People, people feel like they have to explain to you why you're wrong to not like mm-hmm. something because they perceive it seems like the natural perception of everybody is. I don't like that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we, well, so you think it sucks? You know what like, it is? They were hugged. They were hugged too much as children, where they <laughs> feel like everyone needs. Everyone should know what I feel and my, my opinion. Yeah, is. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's it's just like because like I'll tell people like I personally just don't I I don't like Rudy, and it's not like I don't. No. It's it's he's just not my. I don't enjoy his style in any way, shape, or form. There's just mm-hmm. nothing about him. I've never watched one of his videos, enjoyed it. Like he he did the one spoiler where it was like the sea shanty thing, and I wanted to off myself. Like it was the dumbest spoiler video I've ever seen in my life. And some people are like, oh my God. And I'm like, okay, he it's is, fine that you're he's like it's purely, fine that you like him. Like he is very oh yeah. Like the thing is is that he is a character, right? Like he oh, he yeah. leans into what he the thing, if you watch enough of his videos, you really start to see this is turning into way more about Rudy than I planned. But if you right, watch no, his uh, yeah. if you watch his videos, you like start to pick up his patterns about like mm. what he's pushing and how like you know it's just. But he's doing it all in an entertaining way. He's not doing it by being like this is yeah. what I think is going to sell and this is so yeah. it's like I get that he's entertaining. I do, but it's fine. Yeah. Anyways, like it's, it's I would love to right, move on yeah. from this because this went way further no, down no, the no, rabbit yeah. hole than it, I intended. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. I only say that because it's funny because we were uh, the thing I was talking about is how or what was that was more like a kind of a segue into what I was saying with Dave was even I were talking and Mm -hmm. that whole like disagreeing about things and things being not like being okay with somebody else having an opinion about something Mm -hmm. and disagreeing with them doesn't necessarily mean that you need to convince them that you're right and they're wrong. Like we we often that's been like the funniest thing like right with this three years of fab we're over two years of that we've been doing stuff with fab and the thing that we've talked about forever you you kind of joked about it and i said well you should just say that on the podcast because we've become the simpsons we'd like nostradamus oh, lots yeah, of things dude. In, into existence and the thing that is funny about that is the fact that so many of those things people have just absolutely despised and hated and a lot of it comes from the fact that we are just happy to tell people what we think. Mm-hmm. And people always are like, well, hold on. Let me tell you why you're wrong. And I'm like, hold on back. A, we, we don't give a fuck I'd, that we're wrong. No, not, we I don't give a fuck ask, why we're wrong. But also, yeah. even if we are, we don't care. Yeah, like, I'm just giving my opinion. Give yeah. your opinion. That's fine. But don't tell me I'm wrong about my opinion. Like, don't tell me I'm wrong about something that I think needs to be this, that, or another way. You know, we're giving, I, like, you, we're giving you our opinions. Give us your yes. opinions and then fuck off. We'll see you next week. 
Like, yeah. Don't spend 20 minutes trying works. to convince me. Yeah. Like, I'm happy to hear what you have to say. I like it. And if if we're friends, I'm happy to talk about why we disagree about things. I've had conversations about people about the whole Kano thing and where I think Kano lies in Blitz and mm-hmm. where they think Kano lies. And it's I, I have no issue with someone walking away from a conversation being like, OK, well, we disagree about where Kano lies in Blitz. I've definitely been swayed back to he's very good. I would still argue against the idea that he's in any way, shape or form busted because I think he plays a lot more fair now, but he does it with 15 health and he gets high rolled more than anybody because Mm. if somebody else high rolls him, he's just dead. He's like dead on arrival. No chance. If Reinar goes barraging, barraging club, you know, or barraging, barraging, intimidate attack. It's like, cool. Did I just die? I think I might have just died. And like, that's the absolute mm-hmm. ridiculous nature of, you know, right now is he's in a weird spot. He absolutely can high roll you, but he can also get high rolled by a 20 damage turn with one no block card and die. Yeah. And I mean, I have no issue with you disagreeing with me on that. I think you're wrong, but I'm not going to spend an hour telling you why I think you're wrong and why you should change your mind to agree with me. You know, I just, People, people crack me up. We've we've spent over two years people telling us why wrong about Fab. It feels like that like, legitimately feels like that's how we've been. We were wrong about webcam play. I remember how wrong we were about that. Yeah, we were right about a lot of shit, <laughs> fuck, including that. So I don't, I don't care. Anyways, yeah. If you're gonna comment and like try to explain why we're wrong, and you're not like a local, you're wasting your time just saving you the time you're welcome yeah um but if you have an opinion even if it differs yeah and you'd like to start a discussion about that or let us know about it don't be a fucking dick um anyways we can probably jump into spoilers now because i'm fucking pumped to talk about them i really like the direction of these i am getting such strong i I said yeah like i'm like this Mm -hmm the feeling that I got with crucible coming out and how pumped I was. I just had a thought how pumped I was about, um, like just getting like an equipment and weapon expansion for like what we can bring Mm -hmm. with heroes and stuff like that. I love what they're, how their spoilers are going so far. Like, you know, we got ours, we saw ours, which is really cool. Can't tell anything about it, but like, I'm also really pumped about like how much equipment we're getting early too. You know what I mean? Yep. Like seeing the the weapons, the armor, like what it's doing for the classes. Like I haven't seen anything that makes me feel like, oh, that's kind of dog shit, except for like maybe the axe and the ninja chest. It's they're the kind yeah. of like meh. The ninja they, chest feels very, very situational slash for mirrors, but like Yeah, it's good in the ninja v ninja, yeah. but that's it's or in rough like and a briar, a maybe you take stuff. it into briar. Maybe briar, yeah. Like just even, because, but even briar's tough because like briar going because it's the fourth chain. It's the fourth chain, yeah, yeah. And it it's sucks. like that's a that's a lot of chain links just for briar. Could you imagine just lot... like a seven attack, eight attack, eight attack sword is the fourth chain link, and you're like, Fuck. And, yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh, if it yeah. blocked all damage, you know, like if it was like a. Blanket it, like five prevention like a, on yeah, the fourth prevention, chain. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah, then it would be different. But yeah, the fact that it's kind of like that because even Viscerai can have like combo crazy turns where he gets to the fourth chain link. But mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. I yeah, it it's mainly funny because it's just another thing. Like I I kind of had to laugh about that chess piece because it's like of all the things they picked, it's very clear that the intention is the the card should probably say right now. This card blocks lava burst. Lava burst. Like that's right. what the card yep, text yep, should yep. probably say. This card blocks lava burst. Ironically, it dunks so hard on Katsu that it's absolutely beyond hysterical that it blocks a vanilla five lava burst if they get there. But against Katsu, they go to have tunic up and they're like Kadachi, Kadachi, surging, whelming. And you just go, yeah, I block whelming with this five block armor piece. And it's <laughs> yep. like, oh, it's like perfect. Get wrecked, it's the perfect nerd. red whelming block. Yeah. It's <laughs> it just pretty fucking crushes gross. red whelming so hard. You're and like, you just gotta Katsu. save that. Yeah, save that second Kadachi now. Just double up on yep. the yeah, double up on the whelming draw. It's just 
and it just gets you that. And then they they two card block that. And you're like, well, Mugenshi, and you're like, okay, cool. Now I'll use the chest to full block Mugenshi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that clearly five e five tech, and Katsu was standing over there on the sideline, like the the meme, the meme where the guy like just looks annoyed and just like turns yeah. around and just walks away. That's just put Katsu's face on that. Yep, one hundred percent. So. The first one we got, we can go back now. Yep, the, yep, yep. The, the first one we got technically was last week. I don't, I don't, I think Jason and I might, I can't remember if we talked about Battle Axe, but the, the Battle Axe one Battle to Axe, me, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it needs a lot of help mm-hmm. is the biggest issue. It doesn't really, it's just too expensive. It doesn't deal enough damage. It's, I would like to also start this all by saying that if we were being on, I said this in the group chat too, I was like, if we're being honest, and, and we probably should just be honest with ourselves here. All of the speculations for all of these equipments should and could and should right. be. Yeah. It could be bad. It could be good. We don't I, know I think yet. So, yeah. I, There's I think some the that are like, about... they were, they'd be good slotted in as is right now to like what a class right. is available. Yep. But like. Some of them need a lot of help. They, they yeah. feel like they need something around it to really push mm-hmm. it up. Battle this Axe is one, is of, one of those ones yeah. that, yeah, it just feels like it needs something to help it. It's just not good enough on its own. It's like the worst valued warrior weapon that exists, which says a lot because they have token axes and a token Dawn blade mm-hmm. and sabers, and all of them are just better with the current card pool. The, Do you, does the Hanabi over, Blast... Oh, sorry. Oh, Before ahead. we get to yep. that, I was going to ask. Yeah, like, yep. Does overpower feel like almost an unnecessary keyword to you? Like so overpower I, feels so like... it's. It feels almost like... It feels like snag to me. How it's like... It's, so, so, it's worded in such a way that it really doesn't... Go ahead. I, I actually... I really like overpower as an mm-hmm. in-between word, as something that has an effect that mm-hmm. is situationally meaningful and will punish players who play sloppy. Okay. Because overpower I mean, yeah. overpower at its base in, in a lot of ways is similar to dominate. But they have more freedom with overpower to put it on I mean, things for sure with not yeah mid- middling with middling hit where you don't want to because... have dominate readily permanent like you don't want right. a weapon with dominate obviously is fucking crazy right. yeah. because because dominate means right that i can't block because the big thing with dominate the biggest difference between dominate and overpower is if you go i swing for seven and i have a i have a it's dominate and i have a defense reaction in my hand I go, cool, I have to block with the defense reaction to preserve life, or I block with the action card to save the defense reaction. But overpower lets me block with both. Mm-hmm. I'm allowed to block with my action card and then my defense reaction. So it just, now it's more, it starts to become more games and shit where it's like, well, do I need to block with this defense reaction now, or do I save it? And it also might push the game if they use overpower in the right strategic set setting, it could push more defense reactions back into the game to counteract overpower as a keyword. Mm -hmm. And then as a result, what you end up having is now you exist in a world where if defense reactions come in, the game naturally slows down just a step, Mm -hmm. not a lot. It doesn't really slow the game down a ton. It doesn't make it like a full control fatigue game, but more decks are going to sideboard, you know, three or six defense reactions to try and just have them for certain matchups where maybe they get just crushed by overpower. Because like to me, to me, the axe isn't a good use of overpower until we get more cards that pair with it. Because right now it's just there's not a good way to use it that makes it worthwhile to use Right. Yeah. Tax. There's like, not enough. There's not enough draw or like, hit how, What are you gonna pump it with? You're gonna have four snags in hand, like, or not snags? Fucking four. Can't remember the name you, of the card. The blue one, lunging press. That. <laughs> oh, lunging. Yeah. Well, and the issue is you you need to block it. You need to do it beforehand so that they mm-hmm. like because in the de- in the reaction window before that resolves, they can just defense reaction over top of you. And they then, can defense reaction anyways. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's not dominate. It's not dominate. But, that's the point. Yeah, no, that's no, no. the issue. But what it I'm has saying to is, like, first. I do. I would almost hearing you talk about it. I would almost be cool with like 
overpower becoming what dominate currently is and then dominate big, being saved for like big daddy big daddy yeah, yeah big yeah. attacks like yeah. they start to like implement overpower is kind of like yeah it's a middle yeah it's a middle ground i guess it's a middle ground i like because i love i love overpower on the hanabi blaster so if yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, i know you've probably going. all seen it but that one being overpower is great because big thing is saying the third time you play a card with boost each turn, put a steam counter on it, meaning that like you're going to get it off for free and then pairing it potentially with powder keg as like a one or two of with powder keg. Maybe you play it early in certain because the, the big thing about powder keg is it says defending equipment. It doesn't say the card that is defending like currently yep it's anything on the chain link or that would be anything so, still on the chain would be a defending yep. piece of equipment so mech has now the ability with like t-bone to force you to put equipment out there and powder keg has the ability to blow it up Fuck so while yeah. i think that powder keg may not be something you see in every matchup i don't think it's like an auto three of that you just automatic you always play three powder kegs in your deck i don't love that but I no, do it's like not. The idea. Like I think almost. Yeah. I think it, like One if it's two. a Navi blaster. Yep. And it you're running targets. like a slower because I mean this. Yep. So there's a couple things. Navi blaster tells me that this is probably a more mid range dash. Like because one, it lets you slow down because it's every it's the as you pointed out it's the third yeah. attack that has boost, third, not the yeah, third attack that you have boosted. Right, mm -hmm. so you're not having yep. to burn through deck as fast to get the steam counters, um, and then also like, it's a it's a fucking it's not a pistol, so you can it's just a gun. Yeah, yeah, so just have this powder keg be your item. Yeah, because it's not a yeah, it's that's... not a thing that goes away. Yeah, and oh the yeah, it, I mean it make... does. It destroys when you use it. Yeah, but... but it doesn't. There's it's hard to interact with items still. Like there's as no... much as. There's as no having to like we, add a steam counter to it or anything. Yeah. It's just there until you Does use it, it. Yeah. I think the the one of the things about powder keg that makes me think it's like a one or two of, and to your point, is maybe a more mid range and not just full burr boost go, mm -hmm. is that you would like to set up a double or triple T bone turn where you get the piece of equipment that you want. Like you really want to get rid mm -hmm. of a piece of equipment, not just Oh, whatever they throw up there, I'll just powder keg it. Because a lot of times people will put up certain... And to me, the big thing about powder keg that's beneficial is that it makes some of the matchups where traditionally heroes will just throw a piece of... Like, oh, that doesn't block anyway. Ah, I'm going gotcha. to throw, throw my snap snapdragons up there to block. Because yeah. I got to block with a piece of equipment. It's like, yeah, you can't do that anymore. Now it's a decision. Yep. Guardians won't just throw their they, you can't just toss your crown of seeds in front of it because mm -hmm. now you're going to get powder kegged. So in that sense, I think the combo is good, but it mm -hmm. does play a little more mid rangey and you probably want to set up a chance where you can maybe force them to put a piece of equipment they don't want to on the chain, as opposed to where before T-Bone would often get met with just, oh, well, what do I have that zero block? People would throw out like iron hide boots and then not pay for them so they don't get destroyed mm -hmm. and just take the damage. It's like, oh well, it's only a it's a it's a blue T bone. It's for one here. Cool, I'll take the one. Mm -hmm. And it kind of that that was like the workaround. Powder keg gives you an option. Now, granted, it'll feel bad if you don't see it early, but in dash you get spark of genius, so you could always go get it in certain matchups. You get you can run with spark of genius. You effectively can run th you know four or five copies of it if you have your three spark of genius and your one mm -hmm. or two of those. So. So, then moving on, we've got Amethyst Tiara, and my favorite thing about this is just the idea of Visrai wearing a tiara. That just makes me happy. Yep. I think that the yep. world is right now. <laughs> Visrai being all it, badass, looking like a fucking purple energy shadow knight, and then with his tiara, with a big Amethyst on the front. It makes me think of when people do the photoshops of what the heroes are actually wearing mm -hmm. and you see like uh reinar wearing the tunic. the spring tunic yeah, yeah. yeah he's got his he's got his tunic on because he's got he's prepared for war with his tunic 
he's ready to go to battle with his tunic. <laughs> Super cool piece of equipment. I think it'll be yeah. really, really cool, really useful. In, yeah. ba- in certain one's... matchups, right? Like it's situational. Yeah. Like you, it's 100% yeah. a sideboard, and that's only if fucking wizard is huge in the meta. So and and it's it's specifically like a or a combo version in like or the wizard Viscera combo gets version popular again and they just run it yeah. against each other. Yeah, then you can you can feign it in Prevent the mirror and make their... people play. Yeah. Yeah. It's that one's interesting to me. I think at face value it has potential, but then also um Nick and I were talking about it and he pointed out that the one issue with the spell void on like the rune chance into like a Kano is you'd only really want it in a into a meta where it's combo Kano and you're specifically trying to stuff a certain play. Mm-hmm. That's you true. wouldn't run it. You a wouldn't run it into like Kano. a yeah. Yeah. Because you're gonna get outplayed and then mm-hmm. also it's it's damage neutral on the turn that you use it if it doesn't stuff like a wildfire combo for game where they're trying to like OTK you or mm. get you from 30. If you do it on that turn, it's incredible value because you're blocking a lot more than, you know, two or three or five. You're blocking everything that would come from the wildfire. But if you're talking about just a Kano who's playing like mid rangey slow to a tra- more traditional kill where he, they set up like a, a double digit kill, but it's more like mm-hmm. the 12 to 15 range, then it feels bad because if they're like, oh, cool, well, I'm going to lead with Sonic Boom, then you get stuck in that weird part where you're like, oh, God, it's, it's just, what's behind this? What's coming? Is it really mm-hmm. worth giving my rune chance up? Yeah, because if they if can't you... kill me this turn, next turn I kill them with my rune chance. I need my rune chance to kill them next turn. Are they just trying to get me to give up my rune chance? It, you know? It, mm-hmm. it's weird in that sense it becomes damage neutral because it's like you give up four damage next turn prevent four damage this turn it's also kind of weird timing too just because yeah like if they do sonic boom right and yeah. it's like do you let this damage hit and let them flip because if you do it's too late and you've already missed your window to get true value off of breaking yeah. for spell void because this yeah. Sonic Boom itself would have been what you wanted to stop the damage on to stop the steamroll. Yeah. yeah. To it's stop a, it's the a snowball. Little, but yeah. It, it's interesting. It's, I'd like, I like the art a lot. Makes yeah. Me happy. The, the art so far in this set is magnificent. So I do really like the Sand Scour Great Bow. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's exceptionally good. Yep. In that it, it does something similar to what Azalea had access to mm-hmm. in getting a card, basically playing with an extra card. The difference is you can now play with the top of your deck a little more mm-hmm. and have the access of that that additional card. If you have a tunic resource up, you can actually use your tunic to trigger this and have four cards in hand. It also gives the potential to Azalea to put a card face up with this or set up turns where she can actually consider playing new horizon, which is probably the biggest thing. Cause aim counters too. And aim which, counters, whatever those are, whatever that means, but uh, yeah. it's cool. If you get them, I want more things. I, as, I assume, yeah, I assume they're going to be good. <laughs> what, what, what I, I, just knowing that LSS is like pretty thematic, like they're pretty on theme with stuff. Like intimidates and dominated, whatever. Like they're, they're, Keywords yeah. typically have meaning, right? What right. does an aim counter do? What do you think <sighs> aim counters do? So, so that's the thing I'm struggling with because an aim counter would the way that they've used would, counters historically mm-hmm. is that the aim counter would be able to be spent to do something or build towards right. or be something that enables. A different card to affect, right? Right. Like yeah. Tunic. Games, so I wonder energy counters. Right, and, I, and that's why I wonder if Italy. I wonder if aim counters have something to do with a new, like a new bracer. That'd be cool. That, like they they could replace it because even Lexi got to the point where she wasn't really using shock charmers and she was running bullseye bracers because of the value, and I wonder if there will be something to do with aim counters. I I'm. 
maybe there's like a non there are non attack actions that can give more aim counters and aim counters are just buffs mm -hmm. but it interacts with like your bracers your bracers say something to the effect of arrows gain plus one power for each aim counter on them no. you know when they're when they're played so that way if you put one on from the bow and then you play a non-attack action that says, you know, place one aim counter on an, a face-up arrow. And mm -hmm. You can put another one, and now that arrow is getting multiple buffs. That, or I think thematically, aim seems like it needs to have something to do with like, how it hits. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. I, I'm not smart enough yeah, because I'm not a game no... designer to understand how that works. People mm -hmm. are like, well, maybe it makes it so it goes in between the armor. And I'm like, well, but how is that different from just taking damage? Like, can you not block with armor? Because then wouldn't aim counters just give it overpower? So well, why no, would overpower you not doesn't stop armor. You can block with armor. Not stop armor. armor. Yeah. Maybe, but like, maybe, maybe that's aim maybe that legit. Can't be blocked with... Yeah, can't use armor yeah. to block arrows with aim counter. And then Azalea dominating yeah. shit like a fucking mad woman is kind of nasty. Dope. Yeah. That, also I mean, that might be interesting. Really good. Yeah. Also interesting thought. Um, it's possible that if you do that, more defense reactions will come in. Are, are we what? seeing a theme that maybe maybe LSS is trying to slow the game down a step? They're like, okay, <laughs> hold on. We've handled the last five sets a little rashly. Let's, yeah. let's starting with chain, we went a little hard. Um so cool. No, I, I, I also I also like Sandscour, but I mean Again, the fucking art is gorgeous. I'll be honest, I think I just yeah. like the black background. Like just give me give me a black background treatment for all the fucking equipment. <laughs> what um, what are your what are your thoughts on season savior? This, ooh, this uh the guardian shield. This guardian shield. Just where that all of for one. all of my expertise is at. <laughs> um, yeah, in my expert opinion. I don't fucking know. It could be good. It could be bad. <laughs> like, it depends on how much token removal and shit there is. Or right. Armor. Reading the cards, one of the things, my first thought, my absolute first thought was if Reinforced Steel has one of each color strip, if there's a red, a blue, and a yellow, the mm -hmm. yellow is busted. Everyone is going to hate Stalagmite, and Stalagmite mm -hmm. will be the next please God ban it thing. Because if it scales to reinforce steel, red is three or less, and the yellow is two or less, and blue is one or less, that means that reinforced steel yellow would block for three, pitch for two, and remove a counter from stalagmite. stalagmite yeah. And if if people get hit with stalagmite three or four or five times in a game, I I feel like there's going to be some aggro players who mm -hmm. might actually fly to New Zealand to complain to James White in person because we already hear enough about Stalagmite being busted. So that was and, my first thought. I mean, how are immediately given aggro players a lot of credit though? I think they're going to have the patience and wherewithal to like buy a plane ticket, plan know how trip. to use their mm -hmm. phone and plan a trip and <laughs> He'd be like, "I'm flying to see James White. I'm in driving New to see James White right now. I'm driving. I'm driving to him right now." And they we're end up saying somewhere that you're dumb. Monkey, what we're doing. monkey, monkey, monkey. Yep. No, what do you think? What do you think, monkey fucking Guardian monkey. players? Since I fucking hate Guardian, I so that shield doesn't really do it for me until I see more stuff. I think. Yeah. It would be too combo centric. You'd have to play things like I think you'd have to play things like Forge for War, Nerves of Steel. I to think get the armor. And you you would be very committed to just tanking your armor, which I just don't like. I well, probably. okay, I was thinking about this too. Like, what if there was just like a majestic or something, and it just said remove two tokens, two well, armor I mean, tokens. That, That's immediately that, that fucking changes. amazing, right? Because then it. Yeah, goes from that changes one to blocking for lot. three, then two, then one. So it's basically a six block card. Yeah, effectively. Yeah. So and 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 if you're a guardian, <clears throat> you don't mind waiting it out. It's not like you need to use your shield early. You block mm -hmm. efficiently, so you just play to the majestic. The problem is, if that's the case, I'd almost wonder if it's not a, like a legendary. If it removed two counters, you only get one of them in your deck, kind of thing. That'd be kind of dope. A, what if that's what the if fucking it's, fable is? 
I've but if it's an aura, remove, yeah, move account. I would, I would just if they made it as an aura because that's one of the things that I've wanted for Guardian. I wish they would give more auras and less non attacks because we have now we have cool. You have some cool combos you can pull off with Visage, imposing Visage, but it's kind of weird because right now there aren't a lot of great targets for Visage, mm -hmm. so it just kind of feels like I don't know. I'm not in love with that. I do wonder because we keep seeing these. We like reinforced steel doesn't have go again. Um, we've seen cards in Guardian that don't have go again, like Showtime and stuff like that, and how much of a hindrance that can be. And a lot of those cards become very uh, like Stamp have become are very hard to play. I personally, I want it scaled correctly. Listen to me, people. Okay, this is important that everybody grasp what I'm saying because, again, don't want to be misunderstood and misinterpreted. Although, if you do have an opinion and disagree with me, give it in the comments, but I, I don't care. It's fine. I would love Guardian Boots that do the Mage Master's effect or Guardian cards for non-attack actions that are Guardian-specific, um, but scale it. I, I have zero issue with them scaling it to where it costs two or three or something right mm -hmm. if, if if your turn for guardian was pay to play your next non-attack action with go again your next guardian and then you make a surge off tectonic and then you play you have to pay for that the card then you could potentially swing hammer with like a big hand but it's also not unreasonable that that would be that it's a very expensive like four card hand to play where you're not doing a lot but swinging your hammer. So I don't think it's broken personally, but I would just like, I would like there to be a little more play with some of those cards that have non attack or that don't have go again. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. All right. Are we moving on to sap? Let's do it. Let's okay. Move to sap. I need to say this. I don't yep. know what's happening in that art. Like, I, I've the best, this is the best I've come up with. Okay. So there's a giant okay. man or a regular size man to be determined uh -huh. later with a very, very large gap between his upper lip and his nose. Right. Yep. And That's then huge. there is a very small man or a regular size man. If the first guy's a giant, a giant with a upside down mushroom candy cane sword Lance thing, stabbing him in the eyeball. That's the that's all. Mm -hmm. I literally can't yep. see anything else, and I don't know what else I'm looking for. It looks like a lance, like a can, like a green lightning candy cane right. lance, right? But like the the hilt guard sword, fucking cross guard thing is an upside down mushroom, and also yeah, and my I I and how is that sad? Very... I so many things about this yep. art piece. I have looked at this fucking card for so many minutes because I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to be like hours because it hasn't. But like staring at this for like two minutes at a time, mm -hmm. like five different times over the last day or two. Like, yeah, like I've spent this, a lot of time this, staring at this fucking card. It, I'm like, maybe I'm seeing something different. No, it genuinely bothers me. The art on this card, <laughs> I typically can look over a lot of things and let some things go because I don't know. I, is it sapping his face up? Because this is another thing that's bothered. There's so many, the longer you look at it, the more you're going to be like, this bothers me too. But like yep. he, he, he has a huge gap between like his lip and his nose. Like it's unnecessarily big. And yep. his nose looks like it's smushed to be shrunk. If you yes. were to give him an average size nose to his face ratio, the it gap problem, you would that's two birds with one stone just by not smushing his nose up like that. Although so I, the, so it's, it's sapping his face into this mushroom candy cane lance. I don't know, because like the, the thing that bothers me, and it's a very small detail, but mm -hmm. it really genuinely bothers me, is I want I want that lance to have something to do with almost like power sapping or something like his eye. But mm -hmm. I don't know why they didn't put it in the middle of his eye instead oh. of <laughs> directly in the center it's like right next to his nose why not make it on the pupil also why does he only have one pupil what's with the other eye the like, longer you, i'm not? telling you if you want just like a solid 10 minutes of madness just decide to start evaluating this art 
because it bugs me to no end. And the thing that kills me the most is this artist is good enough and like has a big enough grasp on on subject to like understand that like the light going around the giant's pointer finger would be split. Like if you look at the pointer finger on the giant, yes. like look at the small stream going in front of his finger, right? Only part of it, yeah. Which is amazing. Like that's like yes, that's that is a very good concept of like so you can do that but not draw a proportion nose or notice that I almost think that like they they got this art at LSS and they're like, yeah, we want it to be shittier. Like we want it to be like old magic. We want it to be like like the real old school yeah. art. Like make it worse. So the artist was like, fine, I'll fucking scrunch his nose and give him a big upper lip. That was something that they did. Like that's that's the only now, rationale I have. Now I have to, I'm I'm like sucked in so hard to this that I have to find the other art he's made because I need to know what is this just his style and they like mm -hmm. it for certain cards all right okay here we go i found his art you would you like to know what other cards he does yes okay he did timekeeper's whim the weird oh yeah, yeah. clock man submarine trippy yeah. acid trip thing brain freeze which i actually like brain freeze brain freeze is very cool it's very out of scale um, if you look up brain freeze, like his back arm is, it is not mm -hmm. proportional. It is, it is off. Um, he did burn them all. I really like burn them all. Like that's, that's an art that I really enjoy. Um, he did rewind, which I've always thought rewind was cool. It's trippy, but like, it looks like a giant spaceman with a Mysterio head night mm -hmm. thing getting sucked mm -hmm. into the ground or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did a race face, which a race face I've always been kind of neutral on. I I don't dislike it. I don't love it. So he's got a style. Kind of, he's got you know. that's his style. But that's uh, his but style. Also, 100%. I would love an explanation on whether or not this is a giant being attacked by a little man with a mushroom candy cane sword, or a regular size man. Uh, oh my god! Uh, yeah, I don't, what? No, you're good. Now I'm just like looking at a race, like, or I'm not in a race face. I'm looking at brain freeze and I'm don't, losing my mind. Don't, don't, I should, don't, I gotta, don't, 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 right, don't. Window closed. Closing window closed. Window. I got to close the window. So how about sap from a card effect standpoint? I don't even know what it does. I haven't even had a chance to read the words. Here, read that one. Okay. <laughs> it says it scales. Deal no, one I, arcane I damage to target hero. Deal two, deal three. Okay. Yeah. So. Surge if it deals that much. Yeah, Surge is really yeah. unique. If this deals more than one damage. Surge just means if it deals more than the card's value. Base. Yep. Damage, so you basically. need to pump yeah, it and base. have all of it hit, basically. All of it hit, yeah. Yeah, and not even necessarily all of it. If you pump it way over the top, you just need it to hit for more than the card. Uh, I mean, but yeah. yeah. If you put, like, you could theoretically play something like Aether Flare before this and Kano and then pump it by three mm -hmm. or wildfire to this. I think if you wildfire to this, you just don't care. You're just like, look, man, I'm not, I don't care about your stupid two to counter. I really don't. I mean, honestly, like, I think so. I don't play you. a lot of wizard, but like yeah, blue sap seems fucking bomb for Kano. I don't hate it. I don't, I don't hate it. I mean, I, it has to replace something and be better than it. That that's the big thing. Yeah. Um, I think the issue right now is we don't have enough cards with energy counters to target. Tunic, man. Right. Tunic is good. The problem is the card it replaces it has to outvalue. Yeah. And the only one I really the only card it replaces is Zap. It can't replace Aether Dart, which has mm -hmm. gone in because Aether Dart specifically is a blue that targets anything. This do you run again has fallen mirror, back or do you run the pajamas? Uh you run the pajamas, but the oh, pajamas okay. have energy counters too. Oh yeah, that's true. Pajamas are energy counters. The problem is the idea of like hitting hitting a fellow wizard with yeah, like a two or yeah. one, two or yeah. three, just it's not because they don't have to even like if you play the red for four, it has to hit for three. It's not like the red gets to hit for one and get the same effect. Mm -hmm. So all they have to do is level it back to where it was. They just have to counter your buff, right? So yep. yeah. cool. How about how about the best card that's been that's been released so far? Rock. 
I really fucking love this card, actually. I I love this card. I just, love it's it. It's really so much. thematic. Like it's not it's not fucking busted. It's not crazy. Nope. You know you why know, you just, love it. You know who we you know who tweeted that they actually were excited because they were on the they were still on the team when this card was designed, whose idea it was, and they kept the name. Sasha. Sasha designed this card. This was his card idea. That's amazing. Yeah, it's super cool. It's super cool that he he was able to do it. And now he's out bullying people in the community. That's that's really cool. I'm really glad he's back. I hated yeah. when they living legend him. They living legend him yeah. too early. So too him, early, man. Unbanning him more time. apparently it's just a suspension. Yep. Unbanning him was Yeah, he hit the suspended list, not the ban list. <laughs> that's right. Happy to have him back. But I I love rock. I'm very curious if we're going to get some sort of equipment similar to vestige or flame scale for brute that generates resources Mm -hmm. outside of cards in hand. They still have to find a way to empty their hand and do the, do the correct math to get it. Mm -hmm. But I do love, I think, I think part of what I love about it is that they went all in with it. And it's like, this is called rock. And then it's just R O K. They had to give it a name, and then yeah. it's brute weapon, and then the weapon type is rock. rock. Yeah, <laughs> like I love it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Brute. So brute's weapon types are rock, club, claw. That, that's the three weapon types they have. Mm-hmm. Come on, it's so good. I love it so much. So and I love. Yeah, we're but, talking about kind of my. Well, you brought it up. So I was talking about like a chess piece or something that would like basically mm-hmm. let you pitch without pitching and discard instead. But you brought up the banish yeah. thing, which I think unbelievably would help Leviah without breaking her. I think yep. that if she had a chess piece that said you can banish a card and gain resources equal to its pitch value. It yeah. could, like that's that's really great for her being able to consistently yep. hit that then kind of fixes a problem yeah. she's had just, without like breaking just, her. Yeah. Yeah, there's, and just make um, it make it random. Like say yeah. say that technically it's random, so that way they're forced into kind of a weird spot where they do have to manipulate it in a way. It's not just like a free get out of it's not a get out of jail free card for her, where technically she just gets to go. Well, I'm just going to banish this blue six that I have, or this you know. But that's the other thing is there's not unless they give us some of this set there's not a lot of blue sixes to banish that's why everybody runs wrecker romp still mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because wrecker romp is one of the only it might be the only blue six they have access to other than the it's a tree one levia has levia has a second mm-hmm. one um but it's i think uh, yeah i think is it deadwood rumbler oh deadwood rumbler yep yeah. yep because they can banish a card from a zone or something but yeah, yeah i I like I would love something to do with banish for brutes so that Reinar can gain the resources to still swing rock, to throw rock. Um but, but Leviathan like, could discard. maybe he's not getting like yeah. additional like a free off intimidate and shit. Yeah. Yep. 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 I agree. Help them right. both in the middle. And moving on to the final one here. We're actually coming up in an hour. Yeah. We did pretty good. Yeah. Um uh, we've got Bergie's favorite card. I think ever spoiled. Like he's super pumped yeah. for it. I know that he was really amped about like seeing a finally a good ninja equipment. <laughs> it, it made him really happy. Blazing Yoroi. 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 I think something like that. Yeah. Blazing Yoroi. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, yeah. When it's defending on chainlink four or higher, it gets plus four. So the effect is what you stated at the start of the podcast. Yep. Block lava burst. Block lava <laughs> this burst. Card, this card blocks lava burst. And <laughs> blade break. Because everyone knows yep. ninjas don't have equipment that lasts more than an, a single attack. It's how ninja nope. equipment has always worked. Watch any movie. It's, yep. It just gets <laughs> hit and falls off of them. I mean, yeah. ninjas really don't wear a ton of equipment, That's right? That's true. Yeah. But they, should, they shouldn't be allowed to have like a chess piece. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Let me have a goddamn samurai hero. That's all I want. I did, yeah. Just I'm making so, a warrior, but it, it's it is a samurai, but just a warrior. That's fine. Just, just give me a you want the, samurai. You just need the aesthetic to be yes. right. It can be a warrior, but you need the aesthetic to be samurai, samurai. aesthetic in a warrior, right? Exactly. Which, 
I'm it's okay with that. I'd be yeah. I'd be cool with that. So I guess last question then before we close, because this is something I'd be curious what other people think. So I'd be curious what you think. What is something you really hope to see? It's something we haven't seen so far that you really hope to see in Dynasty. Like what's something that we we could use or that would help the game? That's important. That could be a new hero equipment, card types for different classes. Like what are what are what is something that Dynasty could show us that would be huge? I was just going to plug in my thought that I had earlier when I was talking and I was like, Oh, I just had a thought, but then I continue my normal topic. <laughs> I really would love to see armor sets at some point. That's nothing to do with this set. It's not going to happen in this set, but that's what, that's yeah. what Blake was hinting at earlier when we were talking about the Simpsons. Um, give me some Diablo fucking armor set equipment abilities. Bonus. If this has, if you're running shock charmers and the lightning helm and the lightning, fucking greaves and the chest piece you get the four equipment bonus or you can do the three equipment bonus or the two equipment bonus whatever you want take tunic instead um no idea how it would get implemented blake made sure to tell me all of the issues with it and i was like <laughs> yes you're not wrong but i hey sure i would just like could... to point out i am i am i 100 percent just accept that in group chats i play the role often of debbie downer because i'm I don't try to like be Debbie Downer. It's just more like I don't just like to do get it my fucking hopes up. naturally. Yeah, I naturally I am just a really downer person. I'm such a downer. But I just I don't know why. But when it comes to stuff like that, I just want I have to think realistically about is it possible. So my brain automatically goes to why isn't this possible? Is how, just how my brain functions. But mm-hmm. I would like to point out that in the case of the multiple armor set, Robert was probably more negative about it than me. He was very much well, anti that. Robert he felt also like, like just wouldn't work. Well, yeah, he like he gets hung up on shit though that like isn't even necessarily <laughs> the main point. Like I I I made the mistake because I know Robert and I both played Diablo. I was like, I made the mistake of saying, imagine like Diablo. And he's like, it wouldn't even fit on one card. And I was like, well, fucking not verbatim. Like not exactly the same <laughs> fucking space and everything. Because yeah, Diablo equipment is a fucking, you got to scroll. Like, got it. But like conceptually, just like the set concept. He's like, oh, I don't even think it would fit on a card. I'm like, there's no really, like you can't accept that LSS might have he some way. He, no, no. It's, I said Diablo. I already fucked myself. So you, you gave you put a point of reference. You framed the reference I to him. Did. I fucking and did. it was over. <laughs> Nothing I can do at that point. No. Um yep. I don't know, man. I really think maybe that's why I'm so excited for this set, is because I don't have any like expectations because the the, the class I care about isn't even fucking playable. So like I don't like I'm fine. Like, you know, like I can't play, I can't play Prism. So I'm not even like, ooh, new equipment for this or that, or this is what I've been playing, you know, like the deck that I've been playing for the last year straight, I can't even play. So I'm down to see like whatever they throw out. It's going to be exciting. I'll play fucking Azalea if she she gets good stuff. I don't care. So yeah, that's probably why I'm so excited about you. For me, it's just, I hope that they continue what we've seen so far which is just depth in the pool of weapons and equipment. I mm-hmm. looking back when we referenced crucible, there were a lot of really important majestics in that set things that pushed the game mm-hmm. ahead. Right. For sure. Cards like spoils of war. And it, like, there were a lot of cards like that in that set that mean a lot to heroes snapback for Kano and wizards, you know, there's those people, cards are there's super... people listening right now that have like started playing in the last five months that are like spoils of war. What's that? What's, what's the spoils of war? No, they've definitely probably seen it if they've seen if they if they have a Dory player, they know what spoils of war is. But I there were cards like that, but really what changed the game in a lot of ways for with Crucible beyond those was the armor and weapons that we got. It meant mm-hmm. so much to the game to see like the courage of Blade Hold. It was just such a, a boon for warriors like it meant a ton to them or mm-hmm. metacarpus dash. nodes for Kano. dash got a lot of cards was... like not necessarily like equipment but yeah like... 
but like you know, plasma purifiers, which are still so mm-hmm. impactful in the deck in terms of her ability to play slow. You look at like Guardians getting Crater Fist. I, I mean, it didn't really. No one's ever activating that for the most part, but it's it's such an important piece of like every Guardian flips Three Crater block, Fist in that baby. slot, and just that so far is what they've been doing and i'm so excited about having more equipment and more weapons because that is really at the end of the day that's like so much of the the foundation of what fab is is like what you bring with armor and weapons because your deck often revolves your deck strategy interacts so heavily with your weapons and equipment even if you're a, a fatigue block heavy deck you need to have equipment that synergizes with your deck and mm. That's part of the reason that Fab in certain decks kind of feel one note and like they can't do a lot of other things and they can't change strategies is because their equipment suite plays to a certain play style or their weapon setup plays to a certain play style. And I think that giving us more options with that changes the game because now that you can find new synergies with like weapons and cards and, you know, your equipment and stuff and so far, I'm really happy. I hope they keep the trend going and like everybody gets a new equipment, everybody gets a new weapon, and they Oprah that thing. And it's just like, you get a weapon, you get a weapon, everybody gets a weapon. Missing? Who are we missing on weapons right now? We've got um, ninjas have I mean, got Guardian, a new weapon, Guardians Guardian have got, got a new, new weapon. weapon. Yep. 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 You got an offhand. Don't be greedy. Have it, but... <laughs> I want both. I want it all. We- uh, war- Wizards haven't gotten a new like weapon. That's true new new tool we haven't gotten a new op fucking sword for rune blades yeah yeah this one's gonna just say deal three arcane damage and deal three physical damage no you don't have to do anything for it you just and it has natural go again instant pay one instant no cost not once per turn deal three damage (laughs) so like i could just i could just keep doing this it's like yeah so it says yeah Yep. Go for it. it. Just three, 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 three. Saves time in the end, we found, to just yeah. let you do all the damage on one turn. <laughs> You're just doing it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're at past an hour. So, you got anything else you want to talk about? Oh, no. I'm good. You're good? All I'm right. Good, well, I'm man. good. So, yeah. So, if you guys have anything, what do you want to see from Dynasty? Yeah. That's a big one. And And don't forget to comment on anything that you've we've talked about if you get emotional about music yeah. if you are super into you know i don't know just pick D- diablo if you love diablo tell us about your love for diablo i don't i've never played it so it doesn't matter i downloaded it it didn't work on my phone so i was like all right cool i'm, I'm retired from diablo forever um but thank you everybody for watching thank you for listening thank you for subscribing you know getting over 1600 was very cool Here's to 1700 and another giveaway, and then one day 2000 and a tattoo because that's what I need more tattoos in my life. Uh, so we appreciate you guys. If you haven't liked or subscribed, do that for us. We would really appreciate that. But if you're listening at this point, you definitely are already subscribed and you've already liked. So again, thank you for that. But other than that, we will uh, we'll see you next time and for a different configuration, I'm sure. So everybody have a good night. Have a good day. Peace. Peace.